Hey, how's it going? Uh, Mr. Bill here, and today I want to talk to you about a base pack that I'm giving away in a cross-promotional thing with uh, Tone Den. So basically, this pack here is a it's a bunch of samples that I made a while ago. Um, I just made they're just a bunch of bass sounds. They have a bunch of like nice tone and movement to them. Um, and I've, I haven't given them away before. They're previously un given away unless you've like downloaded some project files of mine and then you might find like a couple of these files within the samples folder of the project file. But for the most part, all of these samples are fresh um, and I use them a lot. And I want to show you how to use them and utilize them. And then basically, uh, if you're a hardcore Ableton here on, on MrBillsTunes.com, then you'll have access to these. If not, you can buy them through the shop or if you're a toned in user, you'll get them for free through Toned In. So um, basically what they are, I'll show you, I'll just play a few of them. They sound like this. So they're just like a kind of a bunch of crazy bass sounds. And then I want to show you how I implemented them in this track, Chlorine. So basically what I've done here, there's a bunch of automation on this, but like, what I've done is I've just arranged these bass sounds in a way to create this like a neuro sounding sort of bass drop. It's really sort of techy sounding and stuff. So I'll, I'll play it for you now just so you get an idea. <laughs> So that's the idea. Um, these are the actual bass sounds just on their own. Um, and there's a bunch of automation kind of adding to these. So for instance, this bass sound here, then at the tail of it has uh, some two, uh, has a resonator and the dry and wet is coming up of the resonator and the gain is also coming up. So it adds that like tail to it. Uh, and then on this hit here, there's like a, a Ubic F, which is a flanger turning on. And then on this hit here, there's nothing until the end. And then this auto pan thing turns on, which I guess kind of makes it sound like it's panning to the left and right a tiny bit and gives it a bit of width. And then another resonator here with a bunch of like auto filters and stuff. So it's just kind of like subtle tails and stuff to the sounds. Uh, and then it's layered with all these synths. Which are just kind of simple synth sounds. Just kind of like nice chords and bass and stuff. And then I rendered both of these channels here together. Because if you listen to this, there's like a bunch of clicks and pops in it. Like. Like when plugins are turning on and off and stuff, it sounds a bit weird. So then I rendered it down into phase two, which is the same thing, but just more edits and um, yeah, lots of fades and stuff to get rid of clicks and pops and a little bit of more processing. Like I think there's yeah, just a filter on it and it sounds like this. And then all together with phase two, it sounds like this. So, yeah, very cool. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you how, I, how I'd go about arranging those bases. So let's just turn phase two off. That was just an example and turn phase one back on. But I'm going to turn the Neurotech channel off. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to arrange a bunch of sounds. Um, I might not do the whole thing, but just to give you an idea of, of what I'm doing uh, with these bases so you can utilize them in your own music. So let's just say we drag in bass one. <laughs> So it's just a bunch of nice movement and stuff. Um, I've already previously turned this channel down by 19 dB because I just try to get it sounding similar to the mix here so it doesn't sound all wacky. And then I have this compressor here. It's just a sidechain compressor and it's taking the audio from a chain. So what I do in my tracks is I create a separate channel called chain and rather than sidechaining to the kick and the snare, I sidechain to this one piece of audio. And if I just play this audio on its own, I'll just turn the channel down. It just sounds like this. So it's just like a click and it's really, really short. And the reason why I do that 
is so you can see that the signal coming into the compressor is super short and then because of that um it, it gives you like a way tighter response i feel like with the compressor so if you listen to the the chain with the drums or let's just say more specifically just the kick and the snare you'll hear that it hits every time a kick and a snare hits So that's basically the idea of it. And then, um, yeah, and I'm also side chaining with the Live 8 compressor. So what I did is I went into Live 8 and I saved the compressor into a rack and I named it Old Compressor. And then I went to, uh, I just saved the rack basically and called it Old Compressor. Um, and then when you drag it in, it gives you the option to upgrade. So I can upgrade this and now it's the Live 9 compressor. But I just like the Live 8 compressor. I feel like these FF1, FF2 models and stuff are just nicer. Like if we upgrade it, you lose that and you get this peak RMS and expand mode. And I don't know, the FF1 and the FF2 are really cool, especially the FF1 for side chaining, which is what I'm using this compressor for mostly. If I'm actually trying to compress something, I'll usually use, um, you know, like glue compressor or a separate third party plugin or something like that. So that's just a little bit of side information. But yeah, let's, let's arrange some stuff. And I'm going to use a trick that I've showed you in the past as well. Um, where I use like a, a piece of silence that I call the placeholder and then I kind of am able to just drag this playhead around and you can see that it's just scrubbing through the audio file. So I'm just going to try and find a hit and I'll use the transposition control down here to pitch it around. Maybe I'll have to do some fades and stuff as well. So maybe let's just edit this bit. Um, and then just drag another bass in. Maybe another one. That sounds kind of cool. So you, you just take like the natural movement of the bass really. And it kind of just drag it around. I hold, I'm holding alt and just dragging so it's off the grid. I feel like this one might be need to be a bit quieter. And then here I kind of just want these to happen on the kicks like they did in the original. some cool movement in there maybe maybe that movement there so you get the idea it's just kind of I made these basses that have no particular key or no particular rhythm and now I'm just kind of like editing them to fit in music based on their tone and that's kind of um, brings me on to my next point which is sound design sessions versus arrangement sessions and organizing what's called a toolbox. So in this toolbox I just have a bunch of sounds that I made and these particular basses that we're using now in my toolbox are called Mr. Bill Livestream basses. And I just have a bunch of basses like this. I have like, you know, a bunch of shit I made in Massive and then just some... some you know, random sound design and stuff all over the place. And and I just kind of use these in my, in my tracks a lot. And I feel like this pack here specifically 
has been really useful, especially on my last album, Settling for Mediocrity. So, yeah, that's the idea basically and, and this is the pack that you get. So um, <clears throat> basically follow the links in the description and you can have these packs. Um, I'm not exactly sure how, how we'll be distributing them yet, but there will be links in the description and a description on how to get them. Uh, and then, yeah, here's like a final example um, of tunes that I've used. I mean, Chlorine and Schnapple Slap from Settling for Mediocrity are like the two key examples. So Chlorine obviously sounds like this. <laughs> And then in Schnapple Slap, I use them like this. And actually, if you listen to the section just before that, all of this stuff here is just pretty much just these bases and a click sample being um, being edited a lot. So yeah, that's the basic idea. Um, if we go back to the one that we we're just working on, it probably sounds terrible, but you get the idea. Like that's the way it's done, or that's the way I did it. Yeah, you got, got to be kind of selective with your hits in there, and then you got to process them again. Like I process these a lot again. Um, I mean, you don't have to process them again. I I do. Um, and then I render them down and I edit them a second time, and then layer them with a bunch of other shit. But yeah, that's the idea, and hopefully you enjoy the pack if you end up getting it. And yeah, there'll be links in the description, as I said. So yeah, enjoy. Take care.